Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, and welcome to part 9 of Back to Eden versus Fall Leaves. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix my first year problems uh, so I don't have them again, and then next year will be a very successful year using the Back to Eden method. So I want to catch you up on what's been going on with our weather, and I'm very sorry I couldn't get to this video sooner, but we've had very little rain that you can't even measure. It would rain maybe a tenth of an inch ten times, uh, but it did absolutely nothing to help the soil or to help plants. Uh, so we really haven't had significant rain in the last five weeks. So we're pretty close to being extremely dry and it's been in the high 90s, even hundreds during the days, and it's been hot. And now is a good time to check our soil moisture underneath our wood chips. These chips have been put down since last October. We haven't applied any water to it. And it reads a little bit above eight, which is excellent. I would not think it would be that much. We haven't had rain in the last five weeks, but it's doing good. I moved over to the leaf mold and we're gonna check that moisture. And that's also very good. That's off the scale, the needle's all the way to the right hand side. I just want to review a couple things with you that I have uh, included in the other parts. The leaves, if you lay them on top of soil, or the wood chips, if you lay them on top of soil, or if you mix them together or add other things to it, never build soil. It's just compost. It will decay and the plants will grow inside the compost. It's not a bad thing, but you really want your plants to grow inside soil. That's the key, and that's the way it has been done since the beginning of time. They grow in soil. They do not wish to grow in compost. We have uh, doing a lot of gardening techniques out there in growing in compost, and it works, but you always have to add more and more and more because the compost will go away. It will turn to carbon dioxide and go back up in the atmosphere, and that's the recycling process. The soil stays there and will continue to stay there and be healthy for you and your plants by sequestering carbon through the plant's roots and building that soil and aggregates and mycorrhizal fungi and the whole soil food web. So I want to explain a little bit more to uh, the fact that the covering or the wood chips or leaves or hay or straw or newspaper or cardboard, it just is a covering to the soil. It just acts like a roof to the soil. Now the roof of our house keeps water out. What this roof does is the only thing it does opposite is it keeps the moisture in and that keeps the soil food web alive. It does not build soil. It only kind of stays at the top. It's always the roof. It will not go down into the soil or to build it. It's just the roof to protect it from the sun and the elements so we do not get erosion or high temperatures in our soil that can cause the plants to suffer. Now inside the main part of the house here is our sand, silt, and clay. And that's where the roots of the plant that needs the sun to come down and open up that soil and create mycorrhizal fungi in the root system that harbors it and makes soil aggregates. That's how you build soil. It has nothing to do with the wood chips. Again, it's just a covering or the leaves is just a covering. It does not build soil and it doesn't change into soil. It is a small part of it, meaning maybe 1% of that organic matter might go down into the soil but the plants and the plant roots are the main building. And also our roof to our soil or our covering to a soil does not have to be uh, a dead material like wood chips or leaves or hay or straw. It can be a living material like a cover crop or something green. So let's take a walk up on top of the hill to see this living cover that I have growing here. This is my sunflower field, which I'm doing another video on and how to build soil using sunflowers and winter rye. You can see the sunflowers are taking off very nicely. And this is the winter rye in the ground, which I'll be using in the back to Eden garden. That's going to give me green all winter long and a living root. 
this whole two acres of uh, 20,000 sunflowers is doing very nicely on its own. It has not received, like I said before in the video, any rain in the last five or weeks. It's working together. The sunflowers and the winter rye and the mycorrhizal is helping them all stay alive and reaching deep in the soil to bring up moisture and then they're sharing with each other with the plants. And that's what I need to happen in the Back to Eden and also the fall leaves. That is one of the greatest things about the wood chips. They retain a lot of moisture and they don't blow away. And the, since they're high carbon, they do not uh, decompose very quickly. So we have these walkable paths that makes it easy for us to harvest and to uh, be able to access our garden. Now the downside on it is that we have, we're compromising, we have these beautiful walkways but it's not building soil underneath. But it's a great habitat for worms and also other insects to live in there, but we have to get that green in there. We have to get that winter rye growing. So located in the back here, in this mound of weeds, is some pepper plants. Now I tried something different months ago already and I'm going to use that same method and uh, fixing my first year problem so I don't have them again so I can continue to grow in these nice wood chips and in the future and have a beautiful crop every year. So here I have a row that I left that the weeds to grow around it to prove a point. These are pepper plants in here. They're small peppers. They're called lunchbox peppers. They're an organic variety. So I'm going to cut away the weeds and I'm going to explain uh, how my new method is going to help me in the future by showing you these pepper plants. Now if you can see here, before I cut the weeds out of the way, we have some orange peppers on your left hand side and we have a tomato that's starting to turn red on your right hand side. The pepper plants I planted, the tomato plant is from volunteer seeds that I brought over when I mixed the soil together from some tomatoes that were left over from last year that the seed had overwintered and is growing on its own. Now the weed that's growing in front of them is called ladyfingers. Now, that weed is non-mycorrhizal friendly. It doesn't use it, it doesn't have the capability to ever using it. So it's not stealing nutrients away from the pepper plant or the tomato. Well, the only thing it's doing is shading out the plants. It's not stealing nutrients. Yes, it is using some nutrients, but the nutrients that it needs is a lot different than the other plants around it, and it's actually starving. If it wasn't for the wood chips here increasing the amount of fungi in the soil, this plant, trust me, would probably be about, say, four to five feet tall. And the reason I left these weeds in here is because of the root. Now the roots are still aerating the soil and that's what I wanted them to do to give the plant some help. Now instead of weeds next year, uh, which I didn't have uh, the right amount of seed, we can start planting our winter rye there. We can plant clover there or something else green. We have to have other living roots available in the ground for those plants like the pepper and tomato to go to that mycorrhizal fungi to aerate the soil, to make it healthy, to build the soil, to take the light and transfer it into carbon, liquid carbon, transfer it into the soil and feed the soil food web. That's the key of building soil and growing healthy plants. Now that looks a lot better. Now we can see the pepper plants in there. Yes, they are wilted and yes, they are pale green for the simple reason they don't have that mycorrhizal fungi to increase. Now, other people that grow pepper plants inside the back to Eden method, there's two things that they're doing. They have decomposed wood chips already or they have some compost that they added in or they've been laying it for years. Now, if, if two or three years went by, these pepper plants would look awesome because of the, of the decomposed wood chips. Or a lot of people have chickens that they have and that chick manure is adding something special in there too. Now these are two things that I did not do or have available to me. This is my first year of the wood chips and I don't use chick manure or any type of manure since I'm a certified organic farm. For me to get manure it has to be certified which means there's no antibiotics given to the animals. I cannot just go down to the local farm next to me and pick up chicken manure and put it in here. It's against the rules. 
Now I can solve this easily by growing a legume cover crop next to these plants in the future. And that's what I'll be adding in with my winter rye also too. Now I say winter rye for you nice people out there because I don't know if you have chickens or any type of manure. If you don't, now you should add a legume in with your winter rye now so you can produce nitrogen next year free of charge, well minus the cost of the seed, and your plants will be beautiful. Now, in research over the years, they should be have multiple species of cover crops working together. So I'm gonna plant sunflowers in there, I'm gonna plant winter rye, I'm gonna plant um, annual rye grass too, I'm gonna plant some other uh, prairie grasses I have coming in inside that raised bed that I have. But I just wanna show you that this is working to some extent by what I did with this method so far of a raised bed. And I'm going to dig down now and show you how much I added underneath the wood chips. And I wish to give a special thanks to Red Baron Farm for his help and his kindness to help me stay on the right track of explaining how to do this. So with the help of the tractor, the orange bucket here, I dug a nice little hole or soil pit here so we can see better on the root system of the pepper plant and also how much soil I added into that area of the raised bed and how well the roots are doing in there. Now let's take a closer look. Now here's a great example of what I did in the method I'm going to employ on the other parts. You can see the soil is very dry and it goes all the way from the left hand side to the right hand side. I'm going to say that's about a minimum of two feet wide and it's only as deep as the wood chips over here so it only goes down about say six to eight inches. Now at least a minimum of two feet wide and I'll show the reason why is because I can see roots coming out on both sides of that pepper plant that grew in here in uh, the native soil and also the leaf mold that I mixed together. Now this is going to do just fine in your native soil because you're going to be using a cover crop with this or also legume with this if you prefer. Now I'm going to pull this pepper plant out here for a second and check on the root system. I can see some uh, fine hair roots on both sides of the uh, two feet wide uh, soil that I put in there. Now it should be interesting. I think it's going to pull up that whole clump but we're going to find out. That is one beautiful pepper plant root system. That's very nice. That's looking good. So with my little experiment here, I know my method is going to work to help me to do the rest of the back to Eden garden. Uh, if I employed this my first year, I wouldn't have a problem. If you have an existing back to Eden garden and you are having problems, this might work for you too. The back to Eden method is a great method because it holds so much moisture in the wood chips. There's no doubt about it but it does not build soil. So what we're gonna be doing in the future is having these uh, strips that are at least two feet wide, especially in my garden, that I'm gonna plant multi-species cover crops in and let them stay green all year long. And what's funny is that I remember Paul saying all the time, uh, in the wood chips, it's the green material that gives it life. Now I'm looking at it a different way, but I'm still following his exact words. It's the green material that gives it life to begin with. The green material is the cover crops that's going to be helping me in my garden. And those cover crops are going to be including legumes and grasses, but mostly grasses because that will stay alive all winter long, especially the winter rye. And I've been saying mycorrhizal fungi all the time, but there's two types. Now there's endo and there's ecto. Endo means it goes inside the root and ecto means it grows on the outside of the root. The type of mycorrhizal fungi that I really want to go in my garden is endo. It means that it grows inside the root and comes out into the soil, not onto the surface of the root, but inside the root invades it and that's a type of thing. So I want to grow uh, or use a cover crop of native grasses if I can or native plants in my area that promote this endo mycorrhizal fungi. 
So here's another volunteer tomato plant with a decent sized tomato on it that has grown by seed by the uh, soil that I brought over from another place and added in a raised bed. Now, if you're having problems growing seeds in your garden, it is good maybe once in a while to do a raised area uh, of soil inside the wood chips to the level and then plant your seeds in there and then just throw your wood chips on top after the seeds emerge. Now you can see here with the tomato plant, it did this on its own, so it is possible if you're having problems starting seed in the soil, make sure you have at least a, a circle that's two feet round and you can always go back in and lay newspaper on top after the seeds emerge and uh, cover it with wood chips to keep the weeds down. Another good thing to notice about this tomato plant that was growing in the weeds next to the peppers is it doesn't have any disease on it. The tomato, which I'll pick and show you the bottom of it, doesn't have uh, blossom end rot on the bottom of it either. And this is the tomato and this is the bottom of it. And you can see this is doing just fine. Nice and healthy. If I left it on there, it would probably ripen up pretty well too. So the method I'm going to use is quite simple. Uh, move the wood chips out of the way. That's at the bottom of your screen. And it's about, let's say, anywhere from uh, five to eight inches deep. And now that's in my hard compacted soil. That soil will never improve. If you ever want to challenge me on this, uh, you can always take a large metal fence with openings at least two inches wide and lay it on top of that ground and throw your compost on top and then come back in two years or three years and that metal fence where it is laying there that soil will still be the same underneath only the compost on top has decayed it has not traveled through that soil so on top of this raised bed now I'll call it a raised bed uh, we do not have to worry about that soil being compacted because we're going to be planting the winter rye in there which is our living root which will start building the soil and building aggregates and it will uh, increase the drainage. Now even with that hard pan underneath it we have a raised bed so now the roots can go through this raised bed get plenty of moisture and plenty of air and stay alive compared to just planting directly into the soil which is compact which is going to take a lot longer to do. Now the best thing is the wood chips will hold the soil and the organic matter in place. If you don't have leaf mold or any type of other organic material, don't worry about it. You can use your own soil. And yes, you'll be tilling or disturbing it, but it's a degraded resource already. You're not going to be harming it. And since you're putting winter rye seeds on top, you're going to rebuild that soil within the next month or two and keep it alive all through the winter. So that's going to improve it. I was just going to start filming how to start planting the seeds after I get some more uh, topsoil over here and put it into the uh, trench you see in front of you. Uh, the only problem is it was supposed to rain tomorrow and I double checked and it's not supposed to rain for another week. So I'm going to have to get some irrigation out here. I don't wish to plant the seed in the grasses and have them die on me. Uh, they're quite expensive. And so we're going to have to do that in part 10. Uh, that's going to be within the next week and I'm gonna, in that meantime I'm going to get some irrigation out here which is going to take a day or two to do but I will try to make the video as soon as possible to uh, show you how all this is done. I wish to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. And also, when I was walking out here, I happened to take a, a quick little video of our uh, natural little hawk that we have flying around the farm all the time. So enjoy that video. That will be next. Thanks.